We begin, though, with highly anticipated testimony here in Ottawa. Airlines, airports, and the transport minister appeared before the House Transport Committee to respond to last month's holiday travel chaos. Let me begin by apologizing that we failed to deliver to the level that we had expected and that Canadians had expected from us over this holiday season. Every single Westchester feels the weight and anguish of not being able to meet your travel expectations. We gave refunds and waived fees for our customers to choose who chose not to travel. The airlines should or must continue to uphold passengers' rights, and when they violate them, they need to compensate their customers. All of the witnesses pointed to severe winter weather as the main cause of travel disruption, but the airlines say they shouldn't be held solely responsible for this aftermath. So what now? Let's bring in three members of that transport committee. In Calgary, George Sahal is a Liberal member of the committee. Mark Strahl is the Conservative transport critic. He's in Chilliwack, British Columbia. And NDP transport critic Taylor Backrack is in Ottawa. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, Mr. Strahl, we saw lots of finger pointing between the airlines and the airports today. The only thing they agreed on was that weather was a major factor. But what can government do to ensure these private companies live up to their obligations to passengers? Well, I think, quite frankly, the first thing that the minister could have done was to be more actively engaged on this file when the crisis was unfolding. That's a uh, kind of shocking takeaway that we had from today is that we discovered that the minister hadn't reached out to any of the airports that were impacted by uh, the weather events and the, and the cascading failures that came from that. And we noted as well that he hadn't even reached out to Sunwing, which had left uh, which had left passengers stranded across the globe. Uh, he hadn't reached out to them personally until January 5th when everyone was already back home. So uh, the government should show some leadership. They should have shown leadership during this crisis when people were stranded uh, on tarmacs, when people were sleeping on hotel room uh, couches and on the floors of airports. But the minister was missing in action and, and it's hard to hold the other industry players accountable when you're not in the game, when you're not uh, there to hold them accountable personally, which we believe the minister should have done and failed to do. Uh, Taylor Backrock, hey, David, that's completely in, uh, inaccurate. I mean, that's a misrepresentation of the, the facts. The minister today, was George, in You'll get your the testimony chance, was very okay. obvious, Mark. Um, and clear yes, that he, the he minister. Failed. Okay, just what, all right, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, do his the, job. All right, just a second, Mr. Chal, I'll, I'll let you jump in here. But the minister, it took a while for him to pick up the phone and make the phone call. His office was in contact with people. Uh, so, but when you see the transport system in the country grinding to a halt, the transport minister, it seems like picking up the phone seems like a pretty quick thing to do, is it not? Mr. Chal? Oh, um, yeah, th uh, thank you, David. Uh, you know, the minister was in direct contact with companies, the minister's office and transport officials were all in contact with all the companies. It was a, a challenging situation with a, a major winter weather event. And the minister said clearly that he was in contact uh, with the airlines, his officials were. Um, so through those conversations were. and the minister as well, and the minister was clear uh, stating that today, but prior to this, uh, the minister held a roundtable with industry officials to better prepare for the winter season to make sure we could do everything possible to make sure that the airlines were prepared. The one thing they were not prepared for was a major winter storm, which wreaked havoc. And yeah, industry does. members clearly today stated they uh, apologized, but they failed in building resil resiliency. Members stated they failed in communicating with passengers. We must okay. make sure industry members now that they are obligated to, under the APPR, compensate passengers and find resolutions to the challenges that Canadians faced uh, uh, coast to coast. And that's what we as a okay. committee are here to do, not here to score cheap political points um, and what the Conservatives have been doing all day. Okay, I, I'm going to jump in here. And gentlemen, because we are doing this remotely, if you're all talking at once, it's going to cut everybody off and nobody's going to get hurt. I'll try to manage the time as fairly as I can. That's my promise to you and the audience. So, Mr. Backrack, you've been patient. I'm going to bring you in here. You talked today about passengers in Vancouver who were stuck on one plane for more than 11 hours. And Air Canada said that the airport didn't have a safe way to get those passengers off the plane. So, should airports and airport authorities be subject to the same kind of oversight that we're trying to do with airlines through passenger rights regulations? Well, one of the questions that I asked uh, the representative from YBR in, in Vancouver was uh, whether the federal government had a framework, whether they provided leadership in these circumstances where there's a shared responsibility during an extreme weather event. 
And, and she uh, told the committee that uh, there's room for the federal government to provide that, that structure and that leadership in those situations. But I think stepping back a little bit, David, you know, what we just saw was one of the most difficult uh, holiday travel seasons in recent years. That follows on the footsteps of an extremely difficult summer travel season. And throughout this whole period, we've seen airlines run roughshod over any semblance of air passenger rights. And, and they do that. They're able to get away with it because this minister and this government refuse to stand up to the airlines and lay down the law when it comes to the rights of air passengers. That has to change. And other places around the world do a much better job than Canada does. I, I cannot explain why the Liberals have failed so miserably when it comes to air passenger rights. So, so what exactly, just to pick up on that point, what specifically do you want to see done? Because I heard the minister say many times today, they'll look at regulatory changes, they'll look at legislative changes. Give me your top pick for what Omar al Gabra should do. Well, listen, he just went in and, and tweaked the uh, regulations just last fall, and now he's talking about again going in. These changes uh, can't come soon enough. What he needs to do is he needs to bring Canadian law around air passenger rights up to the standards set by the European Union. It's a much simpler system. It makes compensation the norm, not the exception, and it, it tilts the balance in favor of air passengers. Mm. You know, this is a minister who has tools under the current legislation. He can provide policy direction to the CTA to increase fines for, for airlines, to strengthen enforcement. He's refused to use any of those tools. Instead, what he does is he urges, he coaxes, he expresses disappointment. He's the Minister of Transport. We need better. So, so Mr. Strahl, I, I know you've uh, criticized Minister al Gaber for not getting on the phone quickly enough with the leadership at the various airlines and at the airports. But when you're dealing with something as fundamental as a frozen luggage conveyor belt and an inability to plow and salt or sand a runway, I, I mean, what does the minister picking up the phone do to solve a logistical challenge like that caused by uh, extreme weather? Well, I, I think Canadians expect extreme weather and, and to to have the the minister take a, a victory lap today for how how it all went was was completely unacceptable. I think I think you have to be present. We saw in the United States, for instance, the transportation secretary there the day that things started to go sideways with Southwest Airlines was on the phone with their executives demanding that they be accountable, demanding accountability for passengers in the United States. And instead, I, I know George wants to talk about what the officials did, but the, the accountability has to start at the, at the top. So yes, there were we know there were weather-related delays, but then the cascade of failure started and the minister was nowhere to be found to intervene in the meantime. So when Sunwing starts to have flights go down and, and, uh, and be unable to deliver services to their passengers in the middle of December, and he isn't engage with that company personally until January the 5th, that's a failure. So uh, we can make all the excuses uh, we want to, the minister can, but if he's in charge of this, it's, it's federally regulated airports, airlines, all of it is federally regulated. It falls under his portfolio and he wasn't there to provide the leadership that Canadians and Canadian passengers needed in the crisis. So we just believe he needed to be there to hold the entities accountable, to show that he was not going to simply allow the weather to dictate how he responded. And he wasn't around, he didn't do his job, and we're gonna hold him accountable for that. He didn't do his job, George Sahal. That's the, the criticism there from, the, from Mr. Strahl. Well, the minister brought forward updates in legislation in September to strengthen the APR uh, re regulations to make sure that passengers could be better compensated. Uh, the ministers met with airports, airlines, and industry, and we're conducting a study in our committee right now on air passenger rights to improve the system. And the recommendations we bring forward will improve the system by working together. Will you bring but, it up you know, to the European this today, standard, and We've Mr. seen Chihol? it week after week. The Conservatives just want to uh, score cheap political points and rather than finding solutions to the problem at hand. And we're going to work as a committee. And what we should be doing is for providing recommendations to improve the system so we have a better system for air passenger rights and that air passengers, when uh, they face these challenges, are uh, compensated uh, quickly right. and uh, efficiently and have a quick process to be able to do that. Well, and you have a recommendation. have if a I, role to play. If I could just jump in, you have a recommendation there for Mr. Backrock to bring things up to the European Union standard in terms of protection. I mean, is this something that you as a MP are willing to consider and you think the Liberal Party is willing to consider? 
Well, I'm definitely willing to look at it. And we have in the middle of the study, we're reviewing that right now. The European Union is a completely different situation. Uh, Canada is quite large and we have many ro remote communities. We want to make sure we have a made in Canada solution that is in the best interests of Canadians and making sure that industry can comply and support by right. providing good service, but making sure at the end that our customers, that Canadians are compensated and are provided with exceptional service. Mr. Stroll, uh, beyond your criticism of what the minister did or did not do in the middle of the crisis, what is your recommendation to ensure that something like this, if it does happen again weather-wise, the disruption and the hardship is mitigated? Well, I, I think we do. We have heard testimony again and again that uh, that too much of the onus is placed on the passengers uh, when there is a disruption to prove that they have been put out by the airlines. I think that there needs to be a reverse onus there, where where the consumer, the person that uh, that had the contract with the airline uh, doesn't have to prove that they were put out, but the airline has to prove that they weren't. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, uh, we need to reverse the onus there. And then I think, too, we do need to look at service standards throughout the industry. The, the airlines have a service standard that they're held to through the APPR that we've talked about, but we do need airports. We do need other federally regulated entities like security, like uh, the border services, et cetera, to have service standards. The CTA, we haven't even touched on that, 33,000 complaints uh, backlog taking 18 months to get uh, to get service for for passengers who have who have already tried the APPR but have been unsuccessful with the airline so we need to have service standards for the federally regulated agencies uh, and when they've deviate from those service standards, there needs to be penalties uh, imposed on them as well. We can't just, right. there's no accountability if if we're not uh, measuring performance and holding those entities to account as well. Okay, Mr. Backrack, I'd have about 30 seconds, you'd have the final point. Well, I, I think the Liberals had a chance to, to create the kind of made in Canada solution that Mr. Chahal just mentioned. And as a result, we have 33,000 complaints in front of the CTA. We have thousands more uh, passengers who refuse like they can't navigate the complex bureaucratic uh, hurdles that the, the system puts in front of them and we have situations where we have travel season after travel season that sees these major disruptions uh, there are other parts of the world that deal with this much differently the minister has tools right now that he can choose um, to use to direct the airlines and direct parts of the transportation system to do certain things he refuses to use those tools i think canadians should ask him why and I think we should also look for a timeline uh, under which he's going to table legislation in the House of Commons and finally bring our rules up to the standard set in Europe. Okay. They don't have these kind of backlogs there. Their system is much more friendly to the passengers and it gets people the compensation that they deserve. I don't know why we don't have that in place already, but we need to get there as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, we're out of time. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, maybe we should book you to come back after March, March break. We'll see how things work then. I want to thank you very much, George Shahal, Mark Strahal, and uh, thank Taylor Backrack. Thanks so much. Thanks very much.